and welcome to another live demonstration. Sorry we're a little late, Gary wasn't pushing the buttons in the right order, but I put him straight, we're fine now. Okay, so today I'm going to do three things which I'm not really confident with. Just want to show you that painting is having fun, trying things, experimentation, it's not a final piece every time. So I'm going to be using oils. I'm not going to be using traditional oils because I don't like the smell of terps but I'm going to be using water mixable oils. And the range I've chosen is the Cobra range. So I got a little set of six out and I've only used these colors because I just want to see what they do to start with. So why Cobra? Cobra are artist quality um, water mixable oils. So the pigment to ra uh, binder ratio, so much more pigment to binder ratio compared to um, student quality. Doesn't mean either's good or bad, it's what you prefer. I just want to really see what the artist quality does. Water mixable oils. So they're an oil paint. They work like an oil paint, they finish like an oil paint, they dry very similarly to an oil paint. The, they've got linseed oil in, so they're made like an oil paint. The only difference is with these is you can use water to clean tools or mix with because the uh, linseed oil has been modified to allow it to be water mixable. But on other terms, it's an oil, and that's what people need to remember when they're using them. So I'm not, I can't say I've ever really mastered oils because it's not something I've used a lot. And if I am using them, I'll use them in a very traditional way. Lots of layers, very much more detail. So that's one medium I'm going to be using. So in my little tin here, um, I've got water, no solvents, water for cleaning. I love this little tin because it has a little um, insert and you can agitate your brushes. If I am using solvents, what I'll do is keep the solvent in, clean my brushes and it's self-cleaning. The pigments drop to the bottom and you get a layer of gunk, but the solvent is clean. Water is slightly different because it doesn't allow the pigments always to drop. But I have some life. Um, just put the lid back on. And off we go, self-seal, rubberized, off we go. So just water, no solvents. So the third thing, the second thing, sorry, I'm using. So first thing is the oils, which I'm not overly confident with. But I want to have a go with. I don't want to you know, be held back by not trying something. Is I'm not going to be using a brush. I'm going to be using just painting knives. So I have some plastic painting knives palette knife. There is a difference, but I think generically people call them either a palette knife or a painting knife. A painting knife has a crook in the handle. A palette knife is flat like that, but it doesn't really matter what you call them. I think most people understand. So I have a range of plastic ones. This is really nice in a set of five because I love that shape. And I've got a metal one because it offers a little bit more. I find the plastic ones are quite soft and springy, it just offers a different texture, a different feel. So that's um, the second thing. And another thing is I'm going to have a little bit of fun and work with a few, maybe one um, of these um, tools. I want to see what they do. I want to add a little bit more texture. So again, it's just seeing what you have laying around and see what you could do with it. One thing I'm going to tell you about <coughs> with using the water mixable oils. I'm not going to be using a brush with this. I'm going to use tissue and things like that. So again, something different, um, is the brushes you use. So with traditional oils, most people will use a traditional hog brush and these are perfectly suitable for oils. The hog brush allows solvents, allows the oils and works really well with them. So cleaning them, you clean with oil. Um, if you really do need a good clean and to condition the hairs, a good brush cleaner and a little water. If you use these with water mixable oils, because you'll be using a lot more water, hog hair doesn't tend to like water. It gets a bit brittle. It's okay for cleaning occasionally, but for regular use, you'll find that it gets brittle and snaps. So not an overly suitable brush for using with water mixable oils if you want a long life after it. It doesn't mean you can't use it. Just remember, you're using a lot more water with it, so its life will be shortened. Um, what you can use is, this is a SAA acrylic and oil brush. So this is a synthetic brush. It's 
a little softer than the um, hog brush, so it offers really nice soft um, brush marks, but it's perfectly suitable for both solvents and um, water, so great for the water mixable oils. So just remember the hog brushes can be used, but they tend to brittle and snap. Okay, so let's get started. What I have been doing is I've been looking at how other people have been doing oil paints, how, you know, just I, how to achieve something that I want, but I do need a little bit of help of how to get started. So what I've seen is it is best to put a layer down of colour, just a base layer, and kind of plot where your colours are. So it's going to look a little um, messy, to be honest. And I think with a lot of painting that you do, it will look a little messy. And I'll explain why I've set my palette out like I have. This is a tear-off palette, um, which I like because it means I can just throw it away at the end of the day. And I will use all of my oils because I've not put a lot out. I can easily control how much or how little I'm using. So I'm just putting out where yellow is. And what I did find, because I've done this once to try and show you what I wanted to do, is that I have to be a lot more careful about making colours muddy. I could um, wait and allow layers to dry, um, but that takes days, even a week. Um, so you have to think about where you're putting colours, because if you want to... I found that it's a one-stroke touch, it's not a lot of touches, and I'll show you as I go on, because chances are I'll make it muddy. The great thing about these Cobra paints is that they're uniform drying times. So with traditional oils, you often get um, some colours, especially a white, that dries slower than others. And this is where you've got to think about how you lay your colours down. In traditional oils, if you put a slow drying colour and then cover it with um, a, a faster drying colour, you'll end up with cracking over time. They will crackle. Um, and you don't want that. So the great thing about the Cobra are their uniform drying times. Their drying times dry, all the colours dry at the same time, so you're not, that's one thing you take out of the equation. You don't have to think about it, have to worry about it. Um, so I'm just putting colour on. I'm just going to... And you'll see why I've separated my yellow, because I'm going to be using a lot of yellow, but I will contaminate it. So, at least if I've got an uncontaminated yellow, I'll have a nice clean layer. Le nice clean colour, sorry. So you can see here, I'm just plotting out, and I'm using a tissue. I'm not, I'm just thinking about what bits of green, where the lovely oranges are in this autumn colour. I love autumn. The, I noticed this year, the colours really came alive really quickly. and We got some beautiful um, oranges and russets. Um, but now, I think it's getting a bit later that the colours are now starting to, the trees are begin, beginning to get a little bare and the colours are now on the ground rather than um, still on the tree. Anita? Yes? Uh, Svetlana, who's watching in Russia, says hello from Russia. Hello from Russia. Wow, that's a long way. It's, it's funny that you're talking to a camera and there's actually people in different parts of the world watching you. It, it's, it's kind of a bit unnerving but really exciting at the same time. So, hello, Svetlana. Svetlana. Um, She's a regular viewer. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a go at some of the things I do, because the idea is for it to be achievable. I'm giving you... I was talking to some artists, and they were saying, you know, they're happy to pass on tips and techniques, but there are some things that they keep to themselves, because that's the way they make their business. 
Well, I'm really privileged that I work at the SAA, so I can show you everything. I can show you all my tips, tips and techniques because I don't have to paint to be paid. I'm being paid to paint, which is phenomenal. So I just show you, and I hope you will try and, and have a go and see what you can do. So I'm, what I'm also doing is I get very messy. Normally I would have put my fingers in and gone by fingers by now, but I'm trying to control myself. It's really hard because I just want to get my fingers on the page. Right, so now I'm, this red, I did notice when I used it previously, is very strong. So I need very little. See how very little I put in? And when you're mixing um, dark and light colours, like the red to the yellow, um, take the darker colour to the lighter colour because it's much harder to mix more light colour in than it is to mix a little bit of the dark colour in. So I'm just now plotting where my oranges are. And when I did this first, I did the foreground first, and then I did the water. But Gary, with his infinite knowledge of seeing all the artists, actually suggested I do the colours at the same time, which I forgot to do the green here. And it makes real sense, because what I'm doing is I'm mirroring, water mirrors what it sees, so it will mirror, mirror the colours. And so by putting the colours on now, that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm replicating what you see in nature. Apart from the green. Apart from the green. But I can go back to that, Gary. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and you'll see I probably put colours in where the colours aren't quite the same there. Let me see if I can get away with another fold. So into the green, that like Gary's pointed out, I've missed putting it on. Take the dark bring it in and so you now you can see why I've kept the yellows separately. Just, there we go, green, here. So this is just a first layer, it's, I'm not overly concerned about, all I'm doing is plotting and deciding where my colours are, because I did find that I did muddy my colours when I did it first time. I need more yellow, let's pick up some yellow here. Okay, I think that's pretty much plotted out. All I've done is use a tissue. Like I say, I probably would have liked to get my fingers in there, but I'm trying to keep clean. Okay, so first layer. Um, like I say, I'm going to be using a painting knife with the six colours that came in the set, which are a purple, a green, a blue, a yellow and a red and a white, so there's no brown. But I'm not overly concerned with that because I do know I can make a brown. So mixing on this tear away palette, I'm going to mix up colors. And I would always have a um, painting knife or a palette knife if I was using oils and a brush anyway, because um, mix your colours with these. It is best to mix your colours um, on your palette with a painting knife because what you're not doing is you're not then introducing your paint into, deep into the ferrule of the brush. So mix all your colours with um, a painting knife. What I'm doing is this happened when I was trying before. I'm just picking up a few colours, red, yellow, blue, and I'm mixing them, but I'm not overly mixing them. I'm trying to create a brown. But you'll see when I put it on, so I'm just going to start to build up the tree. And I'm looking for texture. So my first base layer gave me instruction of where to put colour on. And now I'm just using the painting knife. Again, I'm not overly skilled with it. It's not something I use regularly. But I wanted to try something different, something new to challenge myself, to learn about new um, 
and medium I have used in the past but differently. Like I say, I've used it for painting aeroplanes and spitfires and things and it's been a very traditional, very controlled um, days of work kind of work, whereas this isn't, this is getting it on with a little less control because I've not got complete control with this. So, Peter? Yes. Ian, who's another one of our regular viewers, would like you to say hello to him. He's in sunny Barnsley this morning. Barnsley. So not, not quite as far as uh -huh. Up Sunny north. Um, hello, Ian, and I'm glad you're watching um, from the Northern Hemisphere. Um, we have to joke about it because Jackie in the office is um, from south and she thinks anything over the Watford Gap is northern. So we're apparently quite northern in um, Newark, in Nottinghamshire. So hello from to Barnsley and thank you for watching. So just putting this on. So if you are in a rut and you don't know what to do, do something very different and outside your comfort zone. What I do see people doing is saying, oh, I've tried watercolour, don't like it. Well, what else have you tried? No, tried watercolour, didn't like it, can't paint. Okay, have you tried? Or they have only painted in watercolour, which is fine, that's absolutely fine. I'm really all for painting is fun. Painting is enjoying yourself. But you may find that actually you're much more confident as a pencil artist or a pastel artist, but you've never tried because it's quite scary to try something new. So, like I say, I've worked for many years and I'm still finding things that I'm not confident with. I need to learn. I mean, I enjoy learning, to be fair. I enjoy trying new things. But I just want to show you that it's not scary. We don't have to produce something super duper every time. See, I'm not sure how to hold the knife, It's, but I'm going to learn. I'm obviously not mixing enough colour, so that's something I need to learn. Um, so all these things, even as a artist who's painted for many years, I'm not going to say how many, Gary, um, <laughs> I can say, can I say? <laughs> no, please don't. Um, that I'm still learning something new and I'm finding things, you know, difficult. So it's, it happens to everyone. That's nice. I like that texture. I'm not sure if you can see the texture as well as I can um, on camera. We can from the side. I've cut to the side angle. Uh, now, side angle. That. So I'm just, it's a tree. <laughs> trees are knobbly bobbly plus nobody can actually see the image you're working from it's not when you're doing a painting you have so much control as an artist it's really fun because nobody actually sees what you're painting nobody knows the image you're painting from unless it's a portrait unless it's something specific other than that change things move it up a bit I could put a dinosaur in it it doesn't matter it's I know, Gary's oh, horrified. No, no, I'm sorry, that was great. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I'm just working on how my lights will go. Oh, that's a lovely texture there. The light is hitting just under here. Look how that... Look at the, this painting knife lends itself perfectly to um, trees. Look at this. And I can go back in. The thing for me is frustrating about all is they take t so long to dry. I'm much quicker. So I'm having to adapt. I'm having to think about um, just touching. You'll notice here it's picking up some of the purple I had in it um, and some of the green. And this is where I do tend to go muddy because it's a one touch. It's not a case of lots of fiddling. You just need to touch it make a, a decision, you can go back, you can take it back out, but if you don't want over muddy colours, you do have to just be a bit more decisive. So this branch here is quite light. And I 
I can go back in, return, revisit. Okay, there you go. So that's the trees. Um, I'm just going to mix a little bit more and I'm finding the green, the red and a touch of yellow is working to make a nice brown. I'm just going to add some branches. Again, they may not be as clean as I would like with a brush or as controlled. I'm struggling because I keep loading the top of the painting knife and then trying to use the back. So again, just think about um, what I'm doing and just adapt. So put some darker. Let get it less. Again, I've just remembered to add the same colour. I'm trying to paint with it to be honest. I'm trying to use it like a, a brush. So it's something I just need to remember. So again with the green and the red and the yellow. Bit more green. More red. Take this because the reflections are reflecting. So I, I don't think I have mastered using a painting knife fully because, like I say, I am trying to paint with it. But the more I do, the more I learn. Nothing comes straight away. Like I say, even artists who have used materials for years. If they're trying something new, we'll need to learn. Just as everybody else does. Okay. Just put some darker areas along here. I've got some colour on my knife. A bit like that, green. Right. I've got some tissue in my pocket to clean off because I did find that you do really need to have a very clean knife when you're putting your colours on. Because the paint's very wet, it does contaminate. I'm going to change, I'm going to try a different knife. So now I'm going to put a little bit more texture on. So I'm picking up some of this red. I don't think I've got any uncontaminated yellow. Let's have a look. I'm looking for an orange. Again, clean my knife before I put it into the yellow, else it's just going to contaminate. So I'm just learning not only the materials, but practices, best practices for... And now I'm just going to put on some texture. Just different shades of the orange which you can see and what I can do is this this is texture now because the colors really there underneath I'm just now suggesting that it's not a very, not very flat in the background there are leaves or details and this will be very different to um, the water, which will be very smooth and flat. So, I know a lot of you have heard about fat over lean. Um, and it's quite sensible, really, when using oils. You, you do a thinner layer and subsequent thinner layers on top because it's all to, you don't want to do a thick layer like this and then put a thin layer on because it's all to do with the drying time of oil paints. Um, and what will happen in years, if I've put a thin layer on top of here, the colours will, it will crackle. Um, but just be aware, and like I say, with the uniform drying time of these uh, Cobra paints, I've got one um, concern out of the way. I don't have to think about that. 
cut that. Oops, picking up some black, but that's not a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match the colour on this side. And I'm only putting it on because you'll see how I pick later. I will um, move this because I know it's not going to be dry. So just picking up some of the colour and like Gary suggested, which is very, thank you very much. I'm thinking about putting the same colours in at the same time. Okay. Turning my knife over to pick up. This isn't the final layer. I'm going to put a little bit more detailed layers on, but I'm just trying to add some texture. Bit of light. See how the yellow is being, the green underneath is picking up the yellow so I'm getting a little bit muddy colours. It's easily solved, I can just let it dry for a few days and, and then work over. But it is something you do need to practice. So I'm going to pick up some the yellow here. Pick up some green. And I'm going to use green. I'm just going to dull it down and maybe add a bit of blue. I just want to see what the green does. So it's quite dark under here. So mix it with. I'm just allowing the colours to mix on the canvas. And I've chosen this canvas for a reason. And I'll show you at the end why I've chosen this canvas. Um, just what I might do is keep one colour for the red and the orange and then it shouldn't contaminate as much. So back in with the green. I can see it's darker here. Make sure I'm just going to go for it, stop fiddling about with it. A um, lot more yellow. So I was surprised how much colour you use because I'm so used to using something like a watercolour, whereas you use very little, and the biggest medium is water. Whereas with this, you're actually using, I could use mediums. There are water mixable mediums, which are designed to work with water mixable oils. So it works like traditional oils. You've got a linseed oil, you've got a water mixable painting medium, all of those, um, and they are designed to work with the water mixable um, paints because they will keep their water mixable properties. Whereas if you use a traditional oil medium, you can. It's not a problem. Like I said, these are oil paints. What you'll do is you'll just lose um, your water mixable properties, which is what makes these paints as fun as they are. So the water mixable mediums are suitable for the water mixable oils. Again, you can mix the water mixable mediums with um, traditional um, oil paints, but you're just losing that quality that you have um, for the water mixable property. This has got kind of a light green area here. Let me just remember to put some in here. A little bit of white. So what I'm doing is, as I've got the colour already on my 
painting knife. I'm just remembering to replicate. So I'm just looking. And what I can see is all my brush marks are going, well, painting knife marks are going the same way. So I'm just going to mix it up a little bit and just make a little bit more texture. Like I say, this is just that's better. Um, a little bit of texture. I can still go in, I can finite a little bit more. I'm having to step back because I can't always see the colours. So I'm just going to put the texture on and then we'll have a break and then I'll come back and then I can start to just add some details. So I need, just need to quicken up a little bit. And uh, we've got all day. Bye. All day. I haven't got all day. Um, just... Looking at how I can put colour on. And I don't, this is kind of background, so it isn't as detailed as possibly the foreground, but I do need to add some texture. It does not just a very flat. A lot of this is suggestion, it's suggesting trees, leaves, detail. Um, let's go on to here. Needs a little bit of orange. Oh, that's a nice colour. It's probably a bit richer than I would have wanted, but sometimes you need that extra bit of colour. And what it will do is it will kind of harmonise. Yeah, there is a little bit of yellow. Okay, continue with the yellow background. What I'm thinking about all the time is try not to contaminate because I want to keep these lovely colours. And I know by picking up other areas, I do tend to. Okay, it's nice there. Quite yellowy orange in the middle here. I'm also thinking about, so I'm doing it, what does this relate to? So the colours come through here and they come down the back here. And then there's some bits of yellow behind here. And then, yellow, blue, more yellow, I'm going to add some of this darker green. Pick up some other, picking up just what I've got on my palette at the moment because I can refill a minute and you'll see that it's, it is it's a one touch more yellow um, kind of thing else you just start to muddy and I, I think I'm not always doing that I'm working a little bit too so I'll show you here what I mean by the one touch just one touch just to keep that yellow or if I keep doing this, it just becomes a blur. So you do have to be confident with your marks. So there is a green leaves that come across here. And again, it may look a little bit blurry at the moment. I might change knives, just changing it. But I can add Tech, um, light and dark at the end. So let's clean off my painting knife. I think that's a good chance for a break. It gives me a chance to review, to think about where I'm going to go, and then to start to think about bringing the darks and the lights in. Um, so join us in a few minutes and we'll continue with the demonstration.
Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration from the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seems like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello and welcome back. So I've had chance and it is always a good practice is to walk away. Normally I would be doing an oil painting on an upright easel but the studio is not really set up for that so I'm doing it downwards and I can't see the tonal values and to me it often looks like a big mess of colour that's which, why I often stand back here. So sometimes I'm working a little bit blind. Not worried about it like I say painting is fun and learning something and it's not usually until the very end I actually can step back and actually see what really I've done. Um, so taking breaks, working away from your work, putting a mount around it, all good practices. So I'm just now looking at some darker tones. I want to keep some green. Um, behind here is darker. I'm just going to have a little bit of fun, but concentrate on darker areas. So it all ties it together. So now I'm going to change knives. This is actually one of my favorite painting knives. I just like the different shapes you can get with it. So now I'm just going to pick up dark colour. And there's only, how many colours? Six colours in this. I probably don't need to have used them all. Could stick to the traditional red, yellow, blue. But I want to just see what I can do. It will work or it won't work. It's, it's just one of those things. I have a question for you, Anita. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, it's Ian. From Hello, Barnsley Ian. Again. From Barnsley. Uh, know, uh, if, when using acrylic paint, if you water it down more than, say, 30%, it doesn't bond properly with the canvas. Yeah. Does something similar happen with this? Do you have to be careful how much you mix it there? Water it down, or is it similar to oils in that respect? That it, that it well, the medium in it is linseed oil, the binder, and that it doesn't evaporate as such. It it does on sun levels, but it oxidizes, so it disappears from the paint, and so it does need some um, binder. That you, if you're worried about the adhesive qualities. And you're watering down. So say with this water mixable oils, you do have to be careful if you're doing it quite thin. The medium you're using is water. Water's not adhesive. So you need to consider, I would say possibly 30% water just to get it flow and to move nicely. If you're then thinking of um, really thinning it, really glazing. Use a glazing medium, something that's designed to still be adhesive, but allow the colours to run much more freely and allow them to be much more transparent. So 
with the water mixable oils, because your main medium is water, if, like I say, you can mix it on, I wouldn't use too much. I'd still keep more paint to water ratio, just because it's not adhesive. And like I say, I've often say if anyone has raised those kind of concerns, um, to use a medium. Um, so the same with acrylic. Acrylic uses water as um, its medium, but they say don't mix more than 50% um, water with the pigment because it loses its adhesive properties. To be honest, I've never found this, but it doesn't mean it's not something they do have to be aware of. So, um, use a medium. Mediums have been designed to keep the adhesive properties, but also to allow the paint to move freely. So you can see, even just adding, and I've just been tapping darker colours around, and that has started to transform it from very flat to a little bit more um, depth. And here, I don't want to overwork, but there are some darker areas. Let's take it over the canvas so it's not just isolated. Anita? Yes. Uh, Salma, who's watching in Spain. So she's, Spain, uh, Russia, Barnsley. We're she, global. She always enjoys your videos and she's watching from Spain. So. Well, thank you very much. Um, and we're always interested in what you do. So the idea of these is for you to have a go and be inspired. Doesn't have to be the same medium, doesn't have to be the same subject, but you know, we're always interested in what you're actually doing. So post things. Um, right, I'm just going to start to think about finishing. So this is the time I now need to really look at what was I aiming to achieve. So there's some lovely grasses here and I want to bring those out. And I love the fact you can scrape into oil paints because it stays wet. Acrylics would have dried by now and you would still be struggling with moving the paint again. So let's put some dark areas underneath so it's not just all one mass. Like I say, I can't totally see it as well as you may be able to, but that's part of the fun, it's part of the experience. Okay, so maybe a little bit darker here. That's better, I like that now. I'm right, going to use white, <gasps> you say. And I think there's, there's no danger in using white in a painting. Black and white are sometimes seen as faux pas. You can't, ooh, don't use white, don't use black. In this, there wasn't a black, so I've created my own dark colours. But I, I'm one for, uh, why? You know, why should we not, why, why can't we? You know, but so just do it. You know, it will either work or it won't. And to be honest, because I know this is an oil, it's going to merge the white anyway. I'm going to lose, and it's going to become a green. Like I say, I can't always see the light, so I have to step back. Is it working, Gary? It's working. It's working. Don't forget your reflection. Don't forget my reflection, thank you. It's a good job I've got, Gary. <laughs> Uh, yeah, people will be looking at a blank screen. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens is you kind of, like a lot of painters, you get engrossed and you kind of, oh, I forgot to tell you what I'm doing. So I'm, I have to. A gentle prompt. Yes, a prompt. Um, you lose your shout. You've gone quiet, <laughs> um, but you just get engrossed in what you're doing. And I've got to keep telling you what I'm doing. And sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not always completely aware of what you're doing. You just do. A lot of it is I just do. 
Okay, let's do some really light yellow. See if that works. I want to pick up some lovely lighter qualities. So using white, see what I can pick up here. Oops. Again, trying to change the direction. And I'm not putting it all over because you just have to think about just applying it in areas. Again. Let me step back. I think the tree just needs a little bit more structure. I want to show this is a solid tree, not just a blur with the um, background. I think there's quite a lot of colour here, a bit of a riot of colour. So now I need to just bring this back. Right, so we have two trees. Oh, look at that edge. It's making it, it's really nice. It's got some branches that go off here. I'm just, this is really nice for those lovely clean edges. Bring some white in, just to capture some light on the edge here. Getting a bit muddy under here. I don't know if I'll be able to See what I mean by that one stroke? You have to just put it on. Oh, that was nice. Just a few more. I think that, don't think there's any branches in here. A bit more texture. Take something from this. Okay. What goes in the middle there? A bit of yellow. Right, what I want to show you is we're using one of these tools. So, yes, I would normally work on, I can see areas I'd like to work on, but we've only got the short time. So I'm going to use, I don't know which one I like. I think I like the red one. Let me try this. So small, and I want to create, look at those textures, aren't they fun? So that's why I put the colour on first, just to be able to create that. And I would have been able to create it with a brush. What it does need is some white. Also, I know that this is, I've got some hand, it's water. I can wash it off with water. So these are my final touches. Just adding some, that extra bit of light, which the water will have um, picked up. So like you see, I've pretty much used all of the colors I had on my palette, so no waste. And I can just throw that away, which is great for me because I tend to keep things and everything gets a bit messy sometimes. So the light's just up there. Clean my painting knife. So yellow. There's not enough pigment on here to be able to just make sure that here it's touching. I left that gap, but now I need to just ensure that everything comes together. So let me look at where I can put some more white on. And I think that helps tie it all together. Oops, that was a muddy colour there. So to scrape it back off. Right, step back. I think I'm going to stop fiddling there. So, okay, not a, for me, a great piece of work, not a finished piece of work, but I just want to show you that 
just try things, have a go, you know, try something different. This is a medium I don't work like this in. I don't, I've not used a brush. Um, so I'm out of my comfort zone using different tools. But I think on the whole, that's a fairly decent picture. And Gary's going to hate me because he, he's taken me canvas down as always. But I also used one of these. Um, is that centred? Uh, yes, then. Um, one of these floating frames. So you get the frame and the canvas all in one. Oh, look at that. So putting a frame round really can take something that's not finished or not, you know, you're not happy with. Walk away from it and come back and go, oh, actually, I do like that. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you try um, water mixable laws. Like I say, there's no need for those harsh solvents. Um, and have fun. Join us later in the week for a live workshop with Vic Beercroft.